Running Australia. I am in lovely Perth. Um, I've spent this, the day with Alex um, shooting some awesome talent videos. Um, and I've managed to make some time to do a live, um, which I hope is gonna work with our internet connection. Um, and I wanna to talk to you today about employee value propositions, about EVPs. Um, EVPs uh, are what everybody's asking about in employer branding. Everybody wants to uh, have one, everybody wants to um, really make that sing for them, but very few people seem to really understand what it really is about and how they can really use an EVP to turn it into talent results. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about what is an EVP. I'm going to um, talk to you about how we recommend that you uncover that EVP, whether you are working on your own or with a partner. I want to try and get to a few um, hints and tips around best practice and of course also share some pitfalls with you. Um, and finally, I will remind you about what I'm going to tell you now, which is that we have a guide online which is free to download um, with six key tips to, um, on how to craft a great EVP. So, if I want to talk to you about what an EVP is, uh, I need to start by reminding you what employer branding is and what an employer brand is. Um, an employer brand is really how your employer brand is, how people feel about you as an organisation, as an employer. What's it like to work for you? Is it right for me? It affects the way people behave, whether it's a prospective applicant considering whether to apply or even to explore the vacancy, whether it's somebody considering whether to accept a job offer, or indeed whether it's somebody who's actually already working for you deciding whether they want to bring their all um, and really can commit to you um, on an ongoing basis. Um, the big point here is that you can't control your employer brand. You, can't, you don't own it. You can't just decide to change it. Um, your employer brand lives and breathes in the minds, the hearts and the guts of, of, of your audiences, the audiences you're trying to connect with. Um, what you can do though is start to shape and influence that employer brand and a key part of that is your employee value proposition. So nothing I've said so far is rocket science, is what any, any specialist in this space would say. I think what I really want to bring to this um, conversation though is how you practically, practically uh, uncover your, your employee value proposition. I'm going to start with a bit of a negative, which is this. Too many EVPs have been crafted by marketers or people with a marketing um, bent who um, simply craft something that might sound good, might be a, a little bit creative and different, but that actually isn't necessarily based on the reality that isn't built on robust research and engagement, and therefore that's always going to fall flat, or worse still, is going to oversell your talent offer. What we are about at Employer Branding Australia and what anybody you partner with in this space should be about is an authentic, clear understanding of why you are a great choice for the right people with the right motivations and being able to consistently, clearly shape that. So that's where we come to this EVP. You can control how you shape your employer brand. You can control the impact you have on the way people think, or you can certainly start to influence that. And it starts with that EVP. So what is an EVP? It is a clear, consistent articulation of why you are a great choice for the right people. It's your proposition of why work for us. Quite often we find that a great EVP not only talks about, in very succinct terms, what you get and what's it, what it's like to be here, but it also touches on you know, what we need from you as candidates, as employees, and what you should expect in return from us. So it is about that, you know, people talk about a people deal, and I like that idea, it's about you bring this, we bring that. Um, I believe that an EVP, when it's done well, should also capture who you're not right for. It should also capture why you might not be a great choice. I want to be absolutely clear, there is far too much overselling in recruitment. There's too much simplification, there's too much elevation beyond the reality. And, and the worst, you know, it's the worst thing to do because if you attract people based on an exaggeration or based on a lie, um, best case scenario, they walk, they walk out again on day one or day two or, or, or week three um, and you've got to recruit again. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is actually that they, um, they stay and they whinge for the next three, five, 10 years because they feel missold. So I'm dotting around a bit, but I'm trying to give you a feel for how this plays out and how important an EVP is. So your EVP is your ability to consistently show why you're a great choice for the right people with the right motivations. And it does start with words. It starts with themes and it's about how you really distill that into some clear messaging, which creatively and powerfully um, brings that talent offer to life in a way which resonates with the audiences you're trying to engage. And one final thing on that, you're talking not just to prospective employees, it's not just the recruitment mechanism, it is also about employee engagement. You're talking to your current people, reminding them, reinforcing them why they should be staying with you and bringing their all. 
So, I've sort of gone all over the shop there, classic me on the live, I'm still getting used to this. But I hope it's giving you a feel for how that fits together. Last thing I'll say about this, about in the what is an EVP section, it is not just two lines of marketing copy. It is not just a glossy kind of statement, you know, and it's certainly not just a reiteration or rehash of your values. We talk about an EVP framework or a construct, certainly a, a toolkit, which essentially contains all the messaging um, and language that you need with the right tone and the right feel um, to, to showcase your offer. So critically or classically, I suppose, with our EVPs that we do, you might find that it has a top line articulation, um, two, three lines, a paragraph, etc. You'll certainly have a number of pillars. What are the three, four, five things you get by working here, whether they're tangible or intangible? You might have other elements of the messaging. I've always, throughout my career, talked about um, uh, the elephant statement. You know, if, if there's an elephant in the room, if you've got a skeleton in your club, in your cupboard, show everybody, talk about it. Because for the right employees, the challenge is also the opportunity. For the wrong ones, it's best that you get out, get that out of the way early, so they don't apply, or so they so they decide you're not right for them. Um, so where was I going? So. It, it, an EVP framework contains a range of different parts of your, of your messaging, different parts of your offer. And it's, if you think about it, it's what you should be drawing on every time you want to write a job ad or every time you're writing the, the messaging for your career site. And indeed, every time you're doing some storytelling or some content creation for careers or for employee engagement or for recruitment. So how do you uncover it? Well, um, biggest pitfall you could um, fall into um, in this, as I've sort of implied already, is getting your internal marketing team or your, or your generic marketing agency to, to, to produce some nice messaging or wording and then produce a glossy video. Um, I've seen this done so many times and it does not work. Um, either it falls flat because you haven't captured the essence of who you are or you end up send, selling a glossy message which bears no resemblance to the reality of actually turning up and working with you every day. So we always start all of our EVP creation with research and engagement. We need to understand why. And just because you've been there for three years, five years, 10 years, even if you are an employer branding specialist internally, does not mean that you are gonna be able to really capture um, that why um, easily. Um, so what we do is a range of um, techniques we use, and it depends on the client, it depends of course on the budget and the scale of the project. But typically what we do is we want to brief with what we call the people people, you know, the people who are engaging every day with talent, whether it's recruitment, whether it's HR, whether it's internal leaders and so on. Um, we like to talk to the executive and quite often everybody, you know, tends to talk to the executive and then they talk to people on the ground. Not enough people talk to the hiring managers and the people managers um, actually in the organisation. They're the ones who control the employee experience and they're the ones who frankly control you know, how employees feel most of the time. They impact that hugely. So we, we engage with those people. We do use focus groups and discussion groups. I'm not a big fan of um, focus groups all the time. They are obviously um, easier to do than one-to-one -one interviews. But particularly when you're getting into talking to individual employees on the ground about their stories and about their experiences, strongly recommend that you um, do one-to-one -one interviews rather than focus groups and discussion groups. So, focus groups, discussion groups, um, workshops with leaders, with managers, with people specialists, HR, potentially marketing, internal comms, um, depending on the type of organisation you are. Um, and then get into those one-to-one -one interviews with the employees. Those interviews um, are absolutely vital. Um, I should have said we also underpin all of that with quantitative data analysis. So if you've got employee engagement data, if you've got exit interview insights, if you've got any kind of reports or data or insights on how your people feel, how uh, potentially you've already talked to candidates about their perceptions, if you haven't, you really should. Um, we do all of that data and that's great, uh, that data interpretation analysis. That just gives us the, I suppose, a 360 degree view. It gives us a, 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 some foundations uh, for our, our thinking. But it's those one-to-one -one interviews with the employees which really uh, make all the difference. Why? Because we want to hear and understand and get under the skin of the personal individual experience. Um, one of the things that I thought um, when I first started exploring all of this stuff was, yeah, but surely every single individual is different. And they are, you know, you sort of think, well, how can, if you do 20 interviews, 30 interviews with a group of employees, with, with 30 employees about, from an organization, how are you gonna capture everybody's experience? What I consistently have found, and it's, fran it's fantastic, frankly, is that when you interview the right number of people relative to the size of the organization and, and, the, and the scale of the organization and how the organizational roles are broken up. So 
um, depending on how many role families you have, for example, when you, when you get that number right, you consistently find themes and commonalities. You start to see uh, you know, real um, common threads around why people are joining you, why people are staying, why people are connected, and why they might not be. So we research, we do all of that stuff, and the key thing here is we're not just looking for um, the themes. Uh, okay, let me just have a think. Um, here you get to have an impact, here you make a difference, here you get to learn and, and, and have development, here you get to be promoted, here you get well paid, here it's a great supportive team. All of those are cliches. You know, I have a, a joke, if anybody's heard me speak um, publicly at events, I'll often talk about my top five job ad cliches. You know, right up there is make a difference. Um, why do I hate it? Because everybody says it, it's cheap. You know, what, if your people really do make a difference, don't just say that in your job ads. So the key here with these interviews and with all of the analysis and all the work we're doing is not just to understand the common themes, but to understand the angle and the experience. So when someone says make a difference as a carer in an aged care facility or as a chief strategist in a commercial um, high growth organisation or a hairdresser um, in a salon, what do they mean? What, how is that experienced and how do they talk about it? And when you can capture that angle, that's the key to really being able to craft your EDP. So, I've talked quite a lot, so I'm gonna move on quite quickly. Once you've got that research and once you've started to understand the angles um, and the stories behind the themes that you're, you're unpacking, um, then you can craft your EVP. What we're always looking at are what are the key things, what are the three, four, five things that really combine to, to um, create this overall employee offer. And, and what I'm often finding is, you might find there are people who connect with all three, four, five, or six of them, or you might find that some people connect with two or three here, and other people connect with these two and these three. It's about the overall package that you can draw on. So we, we understand those pillars and those themes, we understand the angle, and then we turn that into something creative. And that is the magic, you know, that is where we talk about um, what is it about, um, how do we say something which is um, fresh, which is creative, and which is unique, um, you know, and that does take skill and that does take creativity, but it also, as I've said, takes understanding and a real connection with why your people are there in the first place. Once you've done that, you craft this EVP, you create some great stuff. I, I do strongly urge you to look at using an external partner. It doesn't have to be my team and, and, and me, um, but I, you know, I strongly recommend you try and do it. And if you are going to use a partner, you know, look, I'm biased, but I, I wouldn't use a generic marketing agency or brand agency. I would use an organisation which really understands talent and recruitment marketing and, you know, the, the core marketing and brand principles as well. Um, but once you've got that, then you've got to test it. So we articulate that EVP, we share it, and often we'll play it back to all of the people uh, that we shared it with and that, that we spoke to and that we engaged with um, in the first place so that we can really sanity check have we built something here have we crafted something here which does you justice and which which is what you know is what you wanted to talk to us about then you start testing in market obviously lots of ways you can do that with candidates and recruitment campaigns with your current people um, to really understand um, how it's going to impact on what you do lots lots of metrics you can task around you know brand perception around unprompted or prompted recall um, lots of things you can do depending on your scale and your budget the thing I want to say though is once you've tested it, once you're happy with it, once you've launched it, you know, the thing that people often forget is an EVP isn't just a marketing campaign or isn't just a bit of a brand angle and neither is it just a sort of policy that you put in the drawer. It needs, you need to live and breathe it. You know, this started with saying why are we a great choice for the right people and understanding that. We now need to make sure that we keep living to that and the EVP can play a really fascinating role in keeping you honest, um, in keeping, are we actually practicing what we what we pitch? You know, are we living and breathing our offer? And and I suggest that you keep connecting with your people and re-engaging your people to understand. You know, is this still right? Have we changed the organisation? Is the offer changing? And then refining that EVP accordingly. So there's a, quite a few things in there. I'm just going to summarise a few pitfalls for you. Um, if you're going to do this, I strongly recommend you do use a partner, um, whether it's us or someone else. Um, it is great to get, as well as the capacity and of course the capability and the expertise in this, it's great to get the objectivity. Um, and, and if you're going to use a partner, choose your partner very, very carefully. There's an article on our website all about that. I, I get very frustrated when I see so-called specialists in this space putting out really um, terrible glossy stuff that, that isn't real. Um, that links to my next point, which is if you're going to do this, yes, be creative, yes, sell your offer, yes, be, be bold and brave, but you've got to be honest and be authentic. So don't get carried away with 
who you want to be, the organisation you want to be, or the organisation you wish you were. Focus on the one you are. And, and if you're on a journey and if there are challenges, make sure in your EVP you're talking about that journey and the challenges. Think about that elephant statement. So look, there's quite a lot in there for you to think about. Um, I hope it's been useful for you. Strongly encourage you to jump on our website, employerrunningaustralia.com, and download our EVP guide. Thank you very much. Um, if you've got any questions, drop us a line and we'll be happy to answer them. Thanks.